Hola amigos, welcome to another edition of Yazzie Speaks the Truth. This topic is going to be one of my more controversial topics and I'm hoping that I can stir up some interest, that I can stir up some comments because I have, you know, I've been vlogging for a little bit. I blog a lot, but people have become silent and I wanted to talk about the topic of female preachers. There are a lot of, even in today's modern church, there are a lot of people, there are male preachers who, there are female deacons and things who believe that no, women are not supposed to be preachers, right? And most people will point to the scripture. I have notes. Most people will point to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. And this is the apostle Paul talking about, you know, he says, I do not suffer or permit a woman to teach or, or unsurp or usurp or have authority over a man. Now, in Greek words, in Greek terms, you must know that the words man and husband and woman and wife are the same. And that's why it's so important to be led by the Spirit when you interpret Scripture. And you can't say you're not supposed to interpret Scripture or, you know, you can't formulate your own opinion. You have to, but you have to pray and ask God for the revelation, right? You have to ask for the wisdom. God says you have not because you ask not. If someone is lacking in wisdom, ask me. This is biblical, okay? So in Greek words, man, husband... Woman and wife, these are used the same. They're interchangeable. Uh, and then the next verse, Paul goes into referring to Adam as being the first man, being before the woman. This is true, right? But he is referring to marriage, not the church. Paul is not saying that men cannot learn from women, but women are not supposed to be manipulative and demi domineering over the men and at this point in time in the church um you know these women were not necessarily allowed to study like we are like we have the freedom to do now they weren't allowed to you know lead bible studies and things but these women were asking questions and you know perhaps they were being manipulative and and they weren't having that type of reverence that they should be for their husbands okay um now, there are several scriptures throughout the Bible. Women are mentioned, holy, godly women are mentioned. And they were, you can say they were preachers. They were vessels for God. And how dare you say that the Lord cannot use a woman, a woman. The Lord used prostitutes. You know, the Lord used a prostitute to hide two of the um, spies, like God uses people, God uses women. Um, one of Israel's greatest military leaders was a woman named Deborah. This is in the book of Judges, chapters four and five. Queen Esther, a great woman, protected the Jewish people from destruction, the Jewish people, God's chosen people. Queen Esther, beautiful woman. Proverbs 31 talks about a beautiful, makes a a portrait of a beautiful and liberating godly woman. You can even say that the that Mary Magdalene and Mary that women were the first to preach an evangelical um, message or the first evangelical message which preached by women when they came to the tomb of Jesus and he was gone and they ran out and they told people okay God these two women were the first ones to come and they saw that Jesus was gone. They saw his resurrection and they went to go tell and proclaim what they had seen. Now, can you not say that this was a woman, this, these are women preaching? Can you say that that, that that wasn't God's will? And a lot of times too, you have to remember, it's important to know the context behind what you are reading, you know, that was in the Old Testament. And as people say, and it's true that we are under uh, grace now. Jesus has died. He has resurrected. He has still stole the keys from, he has taken the sting out of death. He has stolen, he has st <laughs> stolen, he has stolen the keys out of the devil's hand. We have the victory, okay? We are under grace. We are under a new covenant. 
okay? And the word cannot contradict itself. So these, these women were godly women. They were used by God to preach the word and to reveal the truth of God, okay? Let's see if I'm missing something. Uh, let's see, Romans 16, chapter 16, verse 7, refers to a woman by the name of Junia who was reckon, recognized in the early church by ch the church fathers, the church heads, as a female apostle, okay? Is this a contradiction? Not at all. Not at all. And I read something online that was very interesting. So let's use the statistic. Let's say, you know, the Christian population is 50% women, 50% men, which is probably not true. It's probably like 70% women, if not more, <laughs> okay, and 30% men. But if this was, if it was 50-50, and if Satan can twist the scripture so much that he shuts up half of the Lord's population, he will and he can do that. And that would, sh that would... Sh having shut down that half of the body of Christ, he has weakened it. So before you go on and say, oh, first Timothy, Paul says no woman, you know, shall preach and shall lead men and all of that kind of stuff. I must tell you that personally, God has called, I humbly, I say this, he has put a calling on my life and he is preparing me to become to become an evangelist. I don't know if that's going to be in the form of, of being a servant, if that's going to be through my nonprofit, if that's going to be me leading a church. Okay. You know, and granted you, you never really truly, you have to be led by the spirit. That is why when he died and when you accept him, he gives you that he gives you the spirit of discernment. And if you are, if you have that spirit of discernment, you should know if someone's intentions are pure, be it male or female. And you should also know that God can use whoever he chooses. He can use whoever he chooses, whether it be a prostitute, whether it be a woman, a, a regular woman, whether it be, you know, a left handed man, which the Lord did use in the Bible. To deliver his people, he used a left-handed man, was the only person who could get through security because he had, I forgot his name, because he had, he was able to put his dagger on the, on his opposite leg. He was left-handed and I think it was on his right leg. And most people had their dagger, I believe, on their left leg because they were right-handed. Okay. And back in the day, being left-handed was considered dirty. You know, you're crazy, you're, you're, you're insane, you're cursed by God. But these are people interpreting things without interpreting it through the spirit. Okay. My, that is my point. That is my point. And, and you can say what you may, you can hate me, you can hate women who are preaching, but I tell you what, you watch, you watch, you pray, you listen by the spirit, because I promise you, Humbly, I say this, I promise you, you will see your servant truly. What they say? Yours truly. You will see yours truly, your servant, one day preaching the gospel. And this is a part of that now. So do your research. Don't just stop. Don't just stop. Read one, one verse and say, this is it. No, no, no. If that's what God, listen listen, pray about it, pray about it and let discern via the spirit. I love you. And, and for instance, I have a, my, my mom, my dad's mom is, is an evangelist. She's a preacher. She's certified. She's studied. She's still studying. She's teaching. She, um, counsels, uh, uh, she's a marriage counselor and she's an elder and she's only in her fifties. She is an elder over church, a district of churches. And I know that her heart is pure and that she is sent and she is used as a vessel by God. How dare you ever say that the Lord cannot use a woman to preach the truth. 
paz y amor.